Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics lecture series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at SCR, the structure of SCR and modes of operation of SCR. And finally, we will be arriving at the static VI characteristics of SCR. The link for the material is provided in the description and you can download it for your reference. So let's get started. SCR at the first place stands for silicon controlled rectifier and there is a specific purpose for giving this name. Silicon is the material that is used while manufacturing this device and that is pretty simple and straightforward. Whereas the word controlled is used for a specific purpose. If you carefully look at the symbol of an SCR, it has three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. Whereas if you compare the symbol with a normal diode, it is clearly understood that this is the additional terminal that is used and it is called as gate. So since gate terminal is used and this terminal is actually used for controlling this device and that is why the word controlled is there in the abbreviation of SCR. And finally, since it is used in rectifier applications or you can also say it is popularly used in high voltage DC applications. And that is why the name silicon controlled rectifier is given to it. It is also referred by another name called as thyristor where this device belongs to the family of thyristor. You can also call this as thyristor. Some other devices which belong to the family of thyristors are gate turn off thyristors and several other devices have been recently invented as well. The first ever prototype of thyristor was introduced in the year 1957. So they wanted to make some modifications with the diode and transistor after analyzing those properties and they came up with a device that will be able to control. So that is why K terminal was initially introduced. Now let us look at the structure, the basic level structure of SCR. And if you carefully observe, it has three terminals, anode, cathode and gate. In addition to this, it contains four layers alternatively stacked together in this particular fashion P, N, P, N and it contains three junctions J1, J2 and J3. So as a conclusion what can we say? SCR is a four layer, three junction, three terminal device. Very very important observation. The gate terminal is usually placed closer to the cathode. If you carefully observe it will be placed closer to the cathode and there is a specific reason as well. So you don't want the length of the wire to be very larger when you're actually giving the supply to this. And that is why the structure is arranged in such a way that the gate terminal is closer to the cathode terminal. One of the major and important points that you need to remember, if you understand this point, the entire working of SCR will be very simple and straightforward. What is the condition for turning on the SCR? Junction J1, J2 and J3 must be forward biased. So when junction J1, J2, J3 is forward biased, current will start flowing from cathode to anode and consequently the device will start conducting. So basically this should act as short circuit, this should act as short circuit and this layer or this junction also should act as short circuit. That means all of them should be forward biased and if this condition is satisfied then the SCR will be turned on. Very very important point. Keep a note of this, very, very important. Now, if you compare it with a normal diode, what is the difference? That is a common question that you might be having. Just like a diode, SCR is also a unidirectional device. That means it does not allow the flow of current in both the direction. It only allows the current to flow in one direction. So usually the conventional flow of current will always be in the opposite direction that we have assumed, isn't it? So it will be from cathode to anode, isn't it? In addition to this, SCR has one more property where it will be able to block the current in the forward direction as well with the help of gate terminal. Obviously, that is the reason why we are going for this device, isn't it? So when the current is flowing in the forward direction, with the help of gate terminal, we will be able to block that current to flow. And that is why this is used in a lot of applications where control is required. So very, very basic points that you need to make a note of and this will be provided in the material. So you don't have to make uh, all of these points, but just be aware that these are very important points. 
Now let us look at the modes of operation. So there are three different modes and based on the modes of operation, you will be able to arrive at the static VA characteristics. And that is why this is very important. Please pay attention towards this concept. So if you carefully observe, I have taken the structure again, anode, gate and cathode. So the same structure and I've given the supply for anode and cathode in such a way that negative terminal is connected to anode and positive terminal is connected to cathode. So junction J1, J2 and J3 is here. Now one important point is I am not giving the gate connection at all. That means gate will be open and I am not going to give any supply to the gate terminal. Very very important point that you have to make a note of. So gate is not connected at this point in time. Now what happens to the working of this particular device? It is pretty simple and straightforward. That is when negative terminal is connected to the anode that is basically the p-type material obviously junction J1 will be reversed by asked, isn't it? Similarly positive terminal is connected to the n-type material and junction J3 will also be reversed by asked. Whereas junction J2 will be forward by asked because n is connected through p to the negative terminal and p is connected through n to the positive terminal. As a result junction J2 is forward by asked. So observation is that junction J1 and J3 will be reverse biased and junction J2 is forward biased. So at this point in time, what can we say? The device is not conducting, isn't it? So SCR does not conduct and access open circuit. Now you might be asking a doubt as how do we say that SCR is acting as open circuit? So simple assumption or simple schematic representation of this can be drawn and you will understand from this. So if you are con con considering this as switches like this and I am connecting it to positive and negative like the battery over here and this is junction J1 it is open circuited junction J3 is also open circuited so you only have junction J2 which is acting as short circuited because it is forward passed. So in this case the current will try to flow here but since J1 is acting as open circuit, obviously no current will be flowing through this path and that is why SCR does not conduct and access open circuit. I hope this point is clear. However, small amount of current flows due to the minority charge carriers and it is called as reverse leakage current. This concept is quite similar to that of a diode, isn't it? Because of the flow of or the conduction of minority charge carriers a small amount of current called as reverse leakage current will be flowing through the device. If a reverse voltage applied exceeds beyond a certain value say VBO or reverse breakover voltage then the device will be permanently damaged. That is if you are applying this voltage the reverse voltage VAK now such that it is greater than VBO then the device will be permanently damaged. So be very careful this is something that you need to take into consideration when you are practically working on these devices. So the device will be damaged and that is why we don't do this method or we don't apply VAK uh, which a higher value of voltage. So now the note is that suppose I apply gate voltage at this point in time. When I apply gate voltage what will happen junction J3 will be forward biased isn't it? Even though junction J3 is forward biased, it acts as short circuit now which was previously open circuit, now it acts as short circuit. But SCR still will be turned off because J1 is open, isn't it? So that is why we don't have any purpose by applying gate terminal. You are adding to additional power losses, isn't it? So be careful while the device is operating in reverse blocking mode, the gate should never be applied and that is why we don't apply the gate supply. So this is very very important. This is quite similar to the reverse uh, biased operation of a normal diode as well. Now let us look at forward blocking mode. I mentioned one point with the help of gate terminal we will be able to control the, the forward current flowing through the device and that can be understood in forward blocking mode. Now I am considering the stream structure and now again gate will be open. I am not applying any gate voltage at this point in time. So we have three junctions, junction J1, J2 and J3 and consequently we are applying positive and negative. Basically I am reversing the polarity. 
So when positive is connected to p-type material and negative is connected to n-type material, obviously j1 and j3 will be forward biased, isn't it? But n is connected to the positive through p and p is connected to negative through n and that is why j2 will be reversed biased, isn't it? So what are the observations? Junction j1 and j3 will be forward biased and junction j2 is reversed biased. So now at this point in time, what can be observed is that let us draw the equivalent circuit again. So this will give you a clear understanding. So we have three junctions. So when J1 and J3 are forward biased, it will be acting as short circuit in this particular fashion. Whereas when junction J2 is reversed biased, it will be acting as open circuit. This is J2, this is J1 and J3. Now the current tries to flow through this direction. It knows that J1 is short circuited and flows till this point. But since J2 is open circuited, no current flows beyond this point and consequently ACR will be in off condition in this mode as well. So even if you are forward biasing or positive voltage is applied in this particular fashion, ACR still is in off state. So ACR does not conduct and acts as open circuit. However, a small current flows due to minority charge carriers and it is called as forward leakage current. This phenomenon is quite similar to the reverse blocking mode as well. Now one important point is that if the forward voltage applied exceeds beyond a certain point, say VBO. So if you are applying VAK such that it is greater than VBO forward blocking voltage, then the device will start conducting. What happens is that more will be the charge carriers injected into the junction and the depletion region of junction J2 will be narrowed down. So it will be very, very, very thin. So once it gets thin, avalanche breakdown of junction J2 takes place and it acts as short circuit. And consequently, if you carefully observe over here, since it was open circuit, it becomes short circuit and consequently SCR will start conducting. So SCR conducts when what happens? VAK is greater than VBO. But we don't prefer this because this is not the right way of triggering the ACR because the current can exceed to dangerously high value when the anode to cathode voltage exceeds VBO. And that is why we don't generally prefer this method. So the observation is that gate is still open. Now in forward conduction mode, what we will be doing is we will be applying the gate voltage. So we have J1 and J2 and J3, isn't it? So similarly, we will be taking the same polarity of anode to cathode voltage, positive and negative, just like the way we actually triggered in forward blocking mode. And if you carefully observe in the previous case, we studied that junction J1 and J3 was forward biased, whereas junction J2 is also forward biased because gate voltage is applied. When I am putting positive to the P-type material, the breakdown of this junction will take place eventually and J2 will be forward biased. So basically J1, J2, J3 is forward biased, isn't it? So when all of these three are forward biased, as I mentioned earlier, according to the condition of ACR to turn on, all these junctions should be forward biased and that is achieved. And at this mode, we will be saying that the ACR starts conducting. So with the help of gate terminal, we are able to turn on the ACR, isn't it? So very, very important point that you have to make a note of. Through gate, we are able to achieve the turn off of device. So what is the observation? We are able to control this device with the help of gate terminal. That is the important conclusion that you need to make. So once ACR starts conducting, one important point that you need to remember is gate has no control over the ACR. So we remove the gate supply once the ACR is turned on. So we don't have the control over the device once ACR turns on. Now, however, before removing the gate supply, care must be taken such that ACR has reached a minimum value of current called as latching current. So this is a very important concept called as latching current and holding current, which we will be going through. So latching current is the minimum value of current that needs to be reached for the ACR to be turned on. So latching current is basically associated with turn on process and it is the minimum current required for ACR to turn on. For example, when the device was in uh, forward blocking mode, for example, and you're applying gate voltage, JT, J2 is forward biased and consequently starts conducting and the minimum current, 
that is required for the ACR to turn on will be the latching current. I hope this point is clear. Now you have, might have a question as how do we turn off this particular device? Because I mentioned Git has no control. It has control only during the turn on process. So how do we turn this off? So this can be turned off by applying a reverse voltage. So it is positive and negative. Whereas if we apply negative and positive, then obviously we will be able to apply some amount of reverse voltage to this device. And in that case, what will happen when we apply the reverse voltage anode current that is IAK will start reducing below a minimum value of current called as holding current. So once it reaches below holding current, the device will be turned off. So holding current is basically associated with turn off process. So very, very important point. A lot of people will get confused between latching current and holding current. So latching current is associated during turn on, whereas holding current is associated during turn off process. So one more important point is latching current is always greater than holding current. So we will be looking at the characteristics as well. But this is one of the most important observation from experimental analysis that was obtained for the SCR. Now, how do we analyze the static VI characteristics of SCR? Static characteristics is basically a plot of anode to cathode that is anode current with respect to anode to cathode voltage that is applied. Now we will be starting to analyze this particular characteristic step by step just like the way we analyze the modes of operation and with the help of modes of operation we will be able to easily understand the static characteristics. Initially what happens whenever we are applying some amount of anode to cathode voltage small amount of anode current starts flowing and the changes in anode to cathode current will be very 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 small. So this mode or you can also say very small amount of forward leakage current flows. So basically this region we will be calling it as forward leakage current or you can say the corresponding mode as forward blocking mode because SCR is still not turned on. So this region is called as forward blocking mode and correspondingly the current that is flowing is forward leakage current. So very very important point. So once this is done what we will be doing is we will be increasing the VAK value. So once you increase the value of VAK what happens the current rapidly increases beyond a certain point. So here you will be seeing the transition taking place. So from here the curves drastically changes to this point and starting at this point the current IAK rapidly increases from this point to this point. Particular point is called as the latching current, the minimum current that is required for the SCR to turn on. And this corresponding mode is called as forward conduction mode. You can represent it as FCM. Now below latching current, minimum current to turn this off is basically the holding current that is IH. So that is why I mentioned IL is always greater than IH. I hope this point is clear. So these are basically the different values of gate current over here. It can be IG1, some amount of gate small current. And once you increase gate supply, IG2 will be much greater and IG3 will be much more greater. And beyond some point, the device will start conducting. As you increase the value of gate voltage, what will happen? The IG current also increases. And once IG current starts increasing, the device will move from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode. Now in the reverse region, the characteristics will be quite similar to that of a normal diode where it goes on increasing and below or beyond a certain value, say, V breakdown voltage VBR or VBO in the reverse region, what will happen? The current abruptly increased to a very large value and the device will be damaged. So this region is called as reverse blocking mode or reverse blocking region. So this is the static VA characteristics of SCR. So from the operation or modes of operation of SCR, we are able to arrive at the static VA characteristics of SCR. I hope this point is clear and you were able to understand this in a much better way. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please do keep supporting. Thank you.